Hello, good afternoon and a very warm welcome to this live Employer Masterclass session from the Change in Education Group. My name is Amos Madra, your host and careers advisor here at Change in Education. In this program, we speak to employers who will give you an insight and an opportunity uh, into the real world of work. Joining me today is Elliot Smith, who's a Senior Business Development Manager at Just Park. Just Park has been marketing its uh, making it easier for drivers uh, to find people like me trying to find parking spaces <laughs> for drivers to find book and pay for parking over 15 years. Today, over 5 million drivers use their award-winning app to find parking each year. Elliot started selling sweets uh, in, form, in form time as a 13-year-old and has been busy ever since. He's been the head of solutions for the world's largest taxi company. Uh, he has launched the brand uh, in different countries as part of leading uh, mobility marketplace. Uh, he's also co-founded the UK's leading player care platform and launched a commercial consultancy brand. What a busy, busy, busy man you are, Elliot. <laughs> Oh, well, welcome to you. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you very much for having me on board. I'm uh, I'm I'm really excited to to share share the past, if you like, with uh, the leaders of tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I, we were talking before you came on air. Um, I saw the guitar there in the background. I was hoping <laughs> that you were going to sing us into today's uh, interview, or perhaps play us out of the interview. Yeah. <laughs> I hope everyone likes rock music. I think it's just about as loud as I play, but there's no there's no quality here. I promise you. So yeah, don't get excited, everyone. I'm not uh, I'm not getting stuck into the guitar today. And I get curious about the backgrounds. I love the settings you've got there. What shirt is that? It looks like a signed. Is that a signed uh, England shirt? This one here. So I've got yeah. So excuse the mess. My uh, my part my partner's the interior designer. All the creativity. So you've got my books on one side which is a mixture of everything. You've got her books, which are basically fashion and interior design. The shirt is... Uh, and the map of London as well. I can see yeah, uh, the River Thames there. That's my roots. And then, uh, yeah. And then, yeah, the Luton shirt. My first my first job out of school um, and an apprenticeship was as a uh, football in the community coach at Luton Town Football Club. And when I when I left, um, that was the shirt that they gave me all signed from from the players and all the staff before I left. So yeah, it was lovely. And then I'm a huge West Ham fan. So sorry about that. Um, but that was my, my Craftsmiths is my, my commercial consulting business that I, that I have separately to my, my nine to five. And obviously the 21 is the year that I founded it, which was this year, just during, during lockdown and in between being made redundant and just, just things like that. Really. So yeah, there's a little bit, it's, it's kind of all sort of like a jigsaw puzzle in terms of like the story it tells about, me and my partner and our family in this room really which is you know it's nice to to keep my creative juices flowing yeah and I think that's really important because you know when you've got a room where there's stories to everything uh, it, it can be as a source source of inspiration as well uh, you know when you look at that Luton shirt you know you remember that time when you were you know that young uh, Elliot trying to figure it out and you know, seeing where things are taking you to, you know, what that, you know, 21, uh, what, you know, shirt means, you know, where you took that plunge and you went for, for you went for it. So, you know, there's a meaning to everything. And I, I like that. And I think, you know, that's, it means more than just having something there for the sake of having it there. It's very humbling. Behind it. Very humbling. Uh, you know, it's always, it's always good to, you know, just look to my right and, and see my partner. And, you know, obviously I've got, photos of my son and um you know my son my son to be because uh you know we're having another one in the in september congratulations so, yeah, nice to, thank you it's nice just to you know have a look around and you know remember what you're doing it for and you know have that extra that extra buzz about you and yeah so you know that's why i do it it's, it's really important to me that i have a nice environment which you know i'm sure you guys you know listening you know when you when you're learning and when you're engaging you know it's it's you all know what a good environment feels like, right? Whether you're on your own or whether you're with friends and family. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's really important to me that, you know, you get the get the right setting. Yeah, and I think you've touched on something important there, a reason to do something. Um, why is it really important, in your opinion, to have a reason? What, what, what can you achieve as a, a result of having a reason to do something? I think it gives you the right level of focus, 
Um, and, you know, for, for me, I guess doing, doing whatever I've, I've done over the last few years is it also changes as you, you get older and your circumstances change. So, you know, it's completely fine to, um, you know, change your mind about things of what you're doing it for. Um, but, you know, I think it, for me, it's, it, you know, the moment you commit to having a mortgage, it's, it sort of narrows you quite quickly in terms of what you, what you do, what you do things for, uh, you know, to keep a roof over your family's head and make sure that, you know, you're paying your bills on time. Um, on the other hand, you know, I'm, I'm not a massive money person at all. I'm very uh, humble and I guess maybe modest in regards to what I, what I do, a lot of what I do for. So, you know, joining Just Park as like my nine to five role, if that's what we want to call it, you know, the, the, the vision that they've got for the future and all of the opportunities that come with it was, was much greater an opportunity for me and driver than, you know, just doing it for the money. Um, and you know, with with player packs, you know, my other my other baby, you know, my leading player care platform, you know, that's that was very much around just solving a problem for people. So, you know, that was the reason to do it. It was was people, it was never about making money. Um, but yeah, I think I think having, you know, and it doesn't have to be one thing, it could be a multitude of things, but you know, having having those reasons and that purpose, you know, it really does help you on your on your journey to discovery you know and and, and um, conviction you know in terms of what you're doing you know it keeps you keeps you aligned it's really important yeah definitely uh, and you know um, sometimes the methods change but the goal always remains the same absolutely yeah definitely so tell us about that 13 year old um <laughs> <Scaring> sweets and <laughs> where that came um. from I should have got my mum to do this. Really. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, uh, yeah, look, I was, I, I went to, um, so John Law school in Harpenden, um, you know, really, really fantastic school. Um, and you know, I, I don't live in the town. I used to live outside in a, in a village with uh, a few friends of ours. And one of them worked for a particular sweets company and he used to get all of the sweets that were gone off or going off. Um, and we used to get on the school bus together and I'd buy off all the stock in the morning for about a tenner. Um, I can't even remember where I got my first £10 from actually, but it's probably irrelevant. But yeah, by the time I got to school, I'd either sold them on the bus or in form time before my name was taken in the register for like triple the amount of money. Um, and, you know, I think I just got the buzz of buying, selling, you know, meeting people, communicating, engaging, just just what sales is as a whole and that, that entrepreneurism. Um and, you know, got into selling, you know, other things down the line. It got into, you know, mobile phones. It got into anything and everything really back then. You know, it was just, you know, a typical 13-year-old who just got his first 20 quid or whatever. You know, there was a bit of a buzz there. So, yeah, I guess that's really sort of stayed with me. You know, I'm still, um, you know, whilst I've got my side projects, I still also like the buzz of, you know, flip selling something. You know, you're finding something on Facebook Marketplace and selling it for an extra five or ten hour, you know. Sounds really silly, but still really excites me. And then, um, you know, if you repeat that a few times, you know, you're in, you're making good money. That's what, what sales is all about. You're a classic entrepreneur. <laughs> I'm terrible. I like for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, listen, it's, it's, it's the, it's the buzz more than anything. You know, it's, that's, that's what it is to me that, that um, satisfaction of what the client gets and their emotions of receiving it to, you know, the transaction along the line, it, it, it's all brilliant. It's all beautiful. I, lo I love all of that. I love the process more than, um, you know, more than the end result, but yeah, it's great. And at that stage, did you, did you know that, okay, this is where my future's going? Um, and, you know, you were set on that and you were thinking maybe as I go into college, it's got to be subjects in relation to this, this area of interest. Um, no, I guess not. I think that, you know, I fell into the the typical 13, 14 year old boys dream, girls dream these days, especially, you know, be, being a pro footballer. And I think my focus was very much on, on me then, you know, I was, I was playing, uh, you know, I was on trial at Luton at the time and school football was going really well. So, you know, buying and selling wasn't really at the, the top of my priorities list at the time. And I think because of the opportunity that, that came about, um, you know, working for Luton Strauss, I mean, I got, I got the next best thing, you know, so I wasn't going to make it as a footballer. I knew that. 
Um, but the next best thing was being a coach. And, you know, if anybody's thinking about being a football coach and working your way up, do it. Best best job in the world. It was, I was so lucky, really blessed. Um, so I guess, you know, the, the whole idea of being an entrepreneur was sort of part. Um, you know, there's a few few things in between then, you know, like just like I say, just buying, selling, flip, selling stuff, you know, but it, it sort of actually got part, to be honest with you. And then, you know, as I got back into the corporate world after I'd finished my time at... Um, time at Luton Town and I got into the corporate world um, selling ground transport software you know came back pretty quickly as a as an entrepreneur and I actually started um, when I moved jobs I then started a, a nightclub promotions company with my best friend so we used to do guest listing and table services in the west end of London which sounds really glamorous but you know really really hard graft um, you know you're 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 finishing work at six o'clock you're going home getting ready you're having food having a shower getting yourself into London, which was like, you know, a 40 minute journey and you, you're there getting people through the doors of the West End nightclubs and you're not finishing until like four o'clock in the morning and then you do it all again, especially if it's a weekday. So, you know, it's not, um, yeah, you know, that's, I think that's when I started to get it back. And then when you start to understand technology, you know, economics, you know, more and more you grow up and you understand the the, the realities of life and, and more importantly, demand, right? You know, you have a good idea about supply when you're young. So, oh yeah, people will love this. And you don't really understand why they would love it. But when you start to really understand demand and what people want, then you start to, you know, strategically understand where you're going to start selling or what you're going to start selling and what service you want to provide. And, you know, that that's, that's definitely done me wonders in terms of, picking up the niches um, as, you know, side hustles and businesses that I have today, 100%. Yeah, and player packs. I love the story of how it all came about. Um, for our audience here, they won't know much about that. Can you tell us uh, the story behind that? Yeah, um, it's really funny because I watched the video that we did last <laughs> time. So my, my granddad, Lewis, uh, was my biggest biggest fan um no matter how bad I was no matter how bad my games were always my biggest fan he was at every single game and he used to have this flat cap these massive glasses from you know the the 90s and this big blue coat and uh, this this blue coat was just like this magical world of <laughs> football items where I say football items it was yeah. like an orange Jaffa cakes, Lucas Age, you know, there'd be a fruit shoot in your top pocket. Like it was just full of everything, you know, um, electrical tape for my socks. And um, he sadly passed away, but um, I I took a, a non-league manager's job um, at a club called Codica, fantastic club. But while I was there, you know, I, I used to travel from Essex to Hertfordshire and you're, you're at the petrol station filling up your car, but you're picking up water, you're picking up Luke's age, you're picking up, you know, and I'm just sitting here going, there, there must be an easier way to do this. And the prices are the prices, right? You know, we don't all particularly want to pay supermarket prices or retail. And um, I was talking to my brother about it, you know, to both my brothers, sorry, who played semi-professional. They're, they're still doing very well on the football scene. And we're just like, you know, it'd be, be great to have a, a digital version of my granddad's, um, and create this platform where, you know, people can buy their match day and training products like never before. Um, you know, and then actually from a, from a, from my perspective, you know, I used to have to go to screw fix, let alone go to Sainsbury's, let alone go, you know, there's so many different things. So we just consolidated everything into this one platform, basically my granddad, but digitally. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, um, it's the leading player care platform in our eyes, certainly. Uh, you know, we get some really, really good feedback about it. You know, it's um, it's doing really well. But yeah, it was all the story was very much around my granddad and just you know what, just the convenience of what he was. You know, I don't downgrade him. You know, I love him to bits, but the convenience of what he gave us on on uh, on match days was you know, can can buy that at the time, but you can now, and that's that's what it's all about. Yeah, and I and I love it because again, it just goes back to what you were saying about having a reason to do things. You know, there's there's a reason behind it. Again, you know, there's that story behind it from you know just seeing your granddad once he's opened his coat. It's just that world of everything that <laughs> just yeah. being available and just saying that's incredible. How can we? Um, you know, get this out to people and let them have that same experience and 
you know, it's again that reason behind it. You know, it just it's uh, it's it's very inspiring indeed, and you can see the, that theme continues even in what you do today. Um, mm-hmm. Talk to us about the time um, at Luton when you were, you know, uh, it's it's it seemed it could have gone either way. How, how was that stage for you? Um, I'd always, uh, to be honest with you, I think um, I made no mistakes. I wasn't a particularly big 13, 14, 15, even 16 year old. Um, and, you know, at the position I played at the time was, you know, being a striker and uh, I wasn't taken, I'd say, you know, very, very seriously by multiple clubs, to be honest, because of my size, regardless of talent. So, um, and I don't think my football ability was there. I know that. Um, and I think I interestingly had the conversation with somebody the other day. And I think this is really important for our listeners today is that at the time, because I had a plan B, I was actually really okay with being told that I wasn't going to be a footballer because, oh, we've got this, you know, we've got this coach's job for you. Brilliant. Like I'm round, I'm in a professional football club every day of my life. I'm with pro footballers every day of my life. I'm working with kids. I'm traveling up and down the country. I get free tickets. Like, you know, I had such a good life. But I think for so many people out there, they don't understand. You you want the what. You want the what, but you don't understand the how you get there. And you also don't understand the implications if it doesn't happen. And, it, and it, you know, it, it really makes me sad to, you know, listen to some of the stories of definitely my friends out there that, you know, haven't, you know, haven't uh, made it as professional footballers and they don't understand that, you know, there's all these levels that you can still play at, you can still earn money doing it, you know. So for me, it's it's it was actually okay at the time. Um, you know, I, I still had a focus, but, you know, I definitely, I definitely feel and understand the implications and the, the definitely the mental health problems that it can have on people 100%, which is why, you know, the purpose uh, is, is really important of understanding what you want, but, you know, the how is, is equally, if not more important for me. So yeah, it was, it was, it was a good, good lesson in life that, you know, even, even having, like I say, this plan B, you know, just having to sit there and I guess somebody tell you something that you've never wanted to hear was definitely hard. Um, but you know, you got, you got to keep going, got to keep going. Yeah, definitely. I th- you know, you've really made a good point, you know, this morning, um, I was talking to our audience students, you know, sometimes you get setbacks in life, things happen, but it's just being resilient and carrying on through. And they've pretty much done that throughout this year um, with the pandemic, homeschooling, lockdown, everything else. Uh, you know, they've been resilient and carried on pushing through. And again, just hearing from someone like yourself is always encouraging. It's inspiring to hear that despite the setbacks, you know, you've always still pushed through. You know, something just says to me anyway, re- regardless of if you made it as a footballer, I still reckon that you would have still had that burning desire to want to do some form of business, a Gary Neville type of football player. <laughs> you yeah. still would have been thinking about what happens after retirement. So it's always thinking ahead. T- tell us why it's so important to plan and plan in, in so many years in advance? I, uh, do you know, I had to learn that. Uh, I had to learn that, mate, like really, really had to learn it. And um, I think, you know, I've, I've lived a very large portion of my life um, enjoying myself, which, you know, I, I don't regret for, for, you know, any love or money. And you know, I had a really, you know, really good time living, if you like, you know, month to month, you know, just spending your wages at the weekend on, you know, going out and having a good time and seeing your mates or going to football and whatever. But you you soon you soon realise that, you know, time catches up with you. And if you want certain things, material or moral, if you like, you know, things come at a cost and that is time and money. And, you know, I'd arguably say that I've had to plan my time more than my finances definitely over the last year because, you know, if you're only putting 50% of focus into something, the likelihood is that you're only going to get 50% of the result. So, you know, that's, that's definitely something I've learned. And it's the same with my finances. You know, I, I, I was never really any good at it until the last five years. Um, but yeah, you, you, planning is really, really important. And not just, 
it's not just about when people, I think when we pick, we talk about planning, I think sometimes there's this immediate negativity around the word planning, right? It's like, it's almost like cleaning your room. <laughs> um, whereas I think cleaning your room versus uh, an opportunity for redesigning my room and, you know, I've just had a new wardrobe in. Actually, didn't mind putting all my clothes back in because I finally got them the way I wanted it and my partner stayed well clear of it. But, um, you know, planning gives you opportunity, guys. Like, it really does give you that opportunity to take a sit back, plan ahead, you know, really understand where you want to be. I think it's also an indicator of patience, um, especially where there's dependencies on things. You know, I'm going through a process at the minute where I know that, you know, a certain outcome on a certain thing is going to have an effect on the journey that follows after that. And, you know, without that planning and really understanding the risk and opportunity, you know, I wouldn't have been in the strongest position I am today. And, and I, you know, I, I, I'm not going to sit here and go, I plan, plan, plan. I, of course I don't, you know, you have to be reactive, but there's, yeah, and I'm sure, you know, many of your students understand the 80, 20 rule about, you know, 80% being one way and 20% being another, you know, it, it, it's really about if you're nudging everything 80% of the time and you're only planning 20%, I can confidently tell you now that's all you're ever going to be doing. If you can get a better balance and, you know, reactivity is fine, but, you know, really putting yourself in a strong proactive position where you're in control, it's not reactive because you planned, um, you'll feel the greater benefit of it in the long run. No doubt. Yeah. I mean, that is incredible advice. Um, you know, it's all intrinsically connected and I love the way you've put it all together. You know, when you talk about, um, time time is so important time is probably the biggest asset that all of us you know can have uh you know uh, the say you know the, the billionaire has 24 hours in a day and so too is the beggar but it's how you use those 24 hours you know you talked about time you talked about patience uh, patience again is really important you know the the say again you know how you invest your future is ultimately, you know, what what happens, you know, plan for plan for tomorrow today so that tomorrow you're not, you know, left uh, in a position where you're wanting. Um, now, again, when you're young and it sounds like, you know, we're being, you know, negative here, just talking about planning and time, but it's probably the most important advice that our audience can ever get, you know, could you talk to us more about why time management again is vitally important because they say time is money um, for any business person you can take away you can wipe them clean out and take all their money they don't care but w- waste their time that's something completely different that's very personal that really does affect them yeah. Um, why is time more important than money? And, you know, what, what is, what, why is time the, 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 the crucial thing? Um, getting to the, the end point very quickly to come back on it. You strip everything away, time's all we've got. You know, anyone that likes J. Cole, you listen to his music, it's all we've got. And, um, and it, you know, it just, yeah. I'm quite open with with the students, right? Like I've got I've got this um, huge fear of, of death. I won't lie, and uh, it fuels my fire for living every single day because you know I don't want time to run out on me about doing everything that I want to do. And you know I'm really open with anybody about that. Um, so yeah, so that's that's where I'm at. I understand and I agree with J Cole. Time's all we've got when everything's stripped back. So how do we get to where we want to be using time management. So I had uh, my, my, it was my boss at Luton, actually. He, uh, he made me catch a cone uh, as in like a football cone. You're know, like, where you run around and he goes, I'll catch it. And I caught it and he threw another one at me and you catch it with the other hand. And then he throws another one at you and you put him under and you catch him. And by the time he throws five at you, you're dropping everything, you know, same with plates, you know, the spinning plate analogy, all of that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you, you, you cannot, expect like I said in the previous point to have a hundred percent quality if you're not putting you know the right amount of focus talent uh, learning planning um, you know risk assessment into everything that you're doing 
And recently I, uh, and actually you, I say I did it, um, I, I brought it to attention of the, the public that follow me on my, my socials around what's called the Eisenhower Matrix. And it's, it's basically a grid um, and this grid works, you know, urgent, important, urgent, not important, important, not urgent, urgent, not important, right? And you can think about it in the, the elements, actually. So, you know, you've got fire, top task, water, wind, um, and earth. And your fire tasks are the ones that you have to put out first, right? So when we think of fire, we think censored. Quick, I've got to put this fire out. Quick, 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 quick. They're the ones that you do first. They are so important to you, really urgent, time dependency. You know, your boss needs it. You need to get it done because there's bills to pay, whatever it is, put the fire out. Water is very much around delegation and, and delegation is an art, right? Because I think I said in my previous interview with you guys, you know, I, I have a guitar and I don't have to play it. Somebody else can play it. I can play the orchestra. Um, and you know, sometimes people and believe me guys, it's true. Some people are better at doing things than you are. Um, so let them do it, just let them do it. And you, all of a sudden you've got this time back where you can refocus your attention on your fire tasks. And then notwithstanding, you've got your earth tasks, which are the tasks that you need a bit more planning. So they're really, really important, but it's not something that we can solutionize or confirm right now. And then you've got your wind, which I call the distraction stuff. Just drop it. Like you don't need to be on Netflix. You don't need to be on Facebook to see what, you know, your aunt posted about a budgie five minutes ago. Just drop the task. Just get it out your window. Stop distracting yourself. So, you know, focusing on those three things, you know, that time management is really, really important. And you, mu you must remember and not be so selfish to think that time dependency isn't all about you. It's about other people that you affect as well. Right. So, you know, having this call, my other half might have needed me to have my son. So having the courtesy to check in and work with her, that teamwork, that collaboration to, you know, manage my time better so I can give you the best quality on this call. Um, you know, that's really, really important. So time management is, a, is, a, is an art. I don't think anybody's got it perfect, um, but you can certainly make a good stab at it by, you know, following those really, really simple rules. Yeah. You know, I could sit and talk to you all day because I think you've got so much wisdom to share and there's just so much that you know you've uh, you, you've you, you've understood about this whole concept of life that we call and uh you know it's um again you know age creeps up quickly um before you realize it and you know for our audience whilst they're still young this is a real opportunity for them they've got a blank canvas in front of them to make what they want with their lives. So this is a really important time for them. Um, now, I know we're coming towards the end of our interview. What final words would you like to leave our audience with today? How old are our listeners? We've got uh, year 10s, year 11s, and uh, some year 12s as well. So we just say 16 to 18, 15 to 18. So I think my head was at, you know, of a footballing space, if you like, you know, at their age. Um, and, you know, I was in college, uh, you know, doing my sports science stuff. So, you know, I'm not going to sit here, guys, and say that, you know, I think you should, you know, do this or do that. What I'll say is, is that what I felt was trying stuff, you know, be, don't, don't be afraid of anything. Don't be afraid of failure. Don't be afraid of, you know, what other people think of you. You know, you're your own person in a world where, everybody's trying to be somebody else in my opinion from you know what we see day in and day out um and you know you you just got to work it out but you know you must you must take time for yourself and I don't think that I did a lot of doing that when I was your age so you know my advice to you guys is you know really pay as much attention to yourselves and give yourself that time out that break you know I was living a very very fast life you know when I was your age straight out of school because I was thrown into an apprenticeship. I was thrown into, you know, a football club. I was thrown into, you know, just everything. Um, and I never really gave myself, you know, time to myself to sit back and reflect on what I want and what I want to do. You guys have that. You have time. You know, I'm, I'm 10, 20 years on a lot of you. Um, and, uh, you know, understand the value of time. You know, I'm not, I know we all, you know, look at our mums and our, our 
dads, grandparents, and we go, yeah, you don't know what you're talking about. Trust me, they do. They've lived on this earth a lot longer than we have. And I'm telling you now, everything they said is true. Um, make the most of time, make the most of health, um, and just don't be afraid of anything. Just be, just be you. Incredible. Wow. Thank you. How can um, our audience uh, get in contact with you? I'd love them to get into contact with me, by the way. You know, I, I really want to help as many people as possible while I'm here. Um, so, you know, find me on LinkedIn, uh, Elliot S. Smith, um, or just Elliot Smith if you type me in the search bar. Um, you can go onto my Instagram account, which I'm sure will help um, plenty of people on here, which is Craft Smiths and the letter C after it. Um, which is my commercial consulting business. So that will give you the Eisenhower matrix that we spoke about and a few other tips on branding and commercialization. So that should really help you if you're looking to, to go into that space. Um, obviously, you can keep up with my businesses at playerpacks.co.uk. I've got another uh, side hustle lined up called Little Lambretta. So I'll, I'll keep you guys informed on that as and when it launches. But yeah, please, if you want to speak out, you know, reach out to me please do find me on LinkedIn, find me on Instagram and, and, you know, let me help you if you need to need a, need a helping hand. Elliot, incredible. Thank you so much. No, no, thank you. Absolute joy. Just talking to you today and hearing, uh, you know, just absolute pearls of wisdom, just, uh, you. Coming out, you know, just hearing there, uh, you know, the, the importance of planning and, you know, uh, time, time management as well. And just being self-aware from that age of 13 and just knowing, this is me. This is who I am. Embracing it, and you know, just, 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 just being you, and not being afraid to take those chances. And I think that's great advice for our audience. Don't be afraid to take those chances. Uh, so it's a fantastic opportunity. It's a great way to finish uh, our uh, week of virtual work experience. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure having all of you. Uh, on board this week it's been uh, such a busy week uh, it's flown by uh, as i was saying this morning you know a week feels like a day these days uh, but it's been great having you guys on board and remember what i started with this morning when this sign fell down it's not how you start but it's how you finish and elliot's quite eloquently put it uh, together for us today and remember the most important asset you're ever going to have is time so use it wisely and as Elliot said don't be afraid to take those risks step out and go out there and do uh, you be amazing uh, so from Elliot from all the team here at Changing Education Group uh, I'm Amos Madra thank you very much indeed and we wish you guys all the very best take care bye-bye 